All right, we're clear. Hi. Turn it on. There. Turn around. There we go. There we go. All right. Um, you're on. I forgot what what did Carlos say I was supposed to do? Are you ready? Are you ready? Would you uh, please welcome Amanda to our, would you start us up in prayer, please? All right. Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started. Good morning to you, Entrepreneuring for Christ. Glad you're here. Hope you had a great week. We're really looking forward to hearing from Amanda this morning. And before we get started, let me open us in a word of prayer. Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning, humble, uh, listening, asking you to come and fill your Holy Spirit in this classroom. We pray that you will speak through Amanda to us, give us new ideas, teach us to walk in new ways. Uh, we come before you, Lord. We love you this morning. We pray in your beautiful name. Amen. Amen. Okay, and now I'll turn it over to Amanda, who's going to talk about bookkeeping. And finances. Good morning. Hi, everyone. Nice to be here again. My name is Amanda. And hello. <laughs> Thank you. I haven't been here in a while, so it's good to be back. It is awesome to see how much the class has grown in attendance since the last time I was here and <laughs> since the very beginning. So um, welcome everyone, it's lots of new faces and I think that's great. So um, I will be teaching just kind of the basics on bookkeeping. So kind of to start, uh, how many of us have a business in here already? Or had. Or had. <laughs> <laughs> nice, all right, so quite a few. How many are like trying to start one in, in, the, in the beginning stages? Very cool, okay. So um, this may be you now or at some point in the uh, beginning stages or even in the very you know, middle stages of your business. Um, so do not worry. <laughs> All right, so first off, what is bookkeeping and why is it even important for us? Um, could you imagine going through your entire business without any sort of idea of what's going on or plan? or where your money is going. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you can. It makes it very difficult though, and uh, usually not very successful, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> so why is it important and what is the key? It is the process of recording and organizing all your businesses by financial transactions. Um, the primary way the business owner can figure out if their business is profitable or not at any given moment. Um, this allows the business to identify any financial challenges it may be experiencing, could be coming into, or have experienced in the past, um, which of course leads us to ways to how do we fix them, how do we prevent them, where could our money be better spent. Um, helps identify areas for profit expansion. Um, I will get more into this as we set up, um, set up our books. 
um, and then it allows for your business to file taxes on time, which is uh, quite important. It's uh, amazing how many people every year um, file the lovely extension. So they have that extra six months and they're like, yeah, I've got it. And then uh, October 14th, they're like, hey, so I'm ready now. I'm gonna <laughs> file tomorrow and I'm ready. And I'm like, oh, cool. <laughs> Good for you. Um, don't be that person. It's really stressful for everyone. For you, you have to put your bookkeeper in a position, you have to put your CPA in a position, um, and then you're sitting there too at their mercy saying, hey, can you please fit me in? And they're like, well, seeing as you called me at 12 p.m., probably not. <laughs> and then you're worried and freaking out as well. So don't put yourself in that position. Get it done on time or at least have the numbers so you can file your extension and say, I'm ready to roll and push that button when it's time. This is so cool, by the way. Yes. I used to have to like run over there and push it. <laughs> I'm like, this is high tech. We're, we're high tech. <laughs> All right. So the first thing are the uh, business accounts. So we need to learn, um, you know, some bookkeeping terminology and what we're working with here. So there are the five basic account types. We have assets, liabilities, income, expenses, and equity. So our assets are cash resources owned by the business. Um, these are gonna be your accounts receivable. So all your invoices that are out to clients, um, inventory that you have in house, all your bank accounts. Um, and then of course, cash on hand is always an asset as well. Big purchases, uh, Skyline owns this church, the building, they own the property, all assets. Um, I don't know if that's true, I'm just exampling. Um, so these are gonna, these are items all found on what they call balance sheet, which I will have a sample later and explain it. Um, next one is liabilities. These are all the things you owe on your business. So um, accounts payable, any of those invoices you're getting in to pay, um, if you owe money on inventory that you haven't received yet, that would be uh, one of your payables. Any loans or credit cards are also going to be in here. This is your debt, basically. Um, next one is income. This We all know this one. This is mainly why we get into business, right? It's for income. This is all the money you're going to earn in your business. Any, uh, any different avenue you're coming into money from your business, that is income. Um, next are expenses. We are all very familiar with this one. They never stop. This is all the money that is being spent. You're just pouring it out of your business every day and night. Um, these are for the items and services you need to run your business, advertising, your payroll, your utilities, um, your meals and entertainment, insurance. It's all expenses. Um, Equity. So this is going to be the value of what's remaining after your liabilities are subtracted from your assets. So this is basically um, what your business is worth. So if you, um, it's your stock, and your retained earnings, which are all uh, calculated in from what the owner puts in, what they take out, your profit, your expenses. And uh, that is why it's pretty important to have a QuickBooks, or not QuickBooks, an accounting system in place. Um, I say QuickBooks because that's what I'm most versed with, but uh, there are plenty others out there. Um, so with these accounts brings us into the chart of accounts. Um, so this is going to be really one of the most important things, the foundation of setting up your books in the business. When I say setting up our books, I'm talking about, like I said, a uh, bookkeeping platform, QuickBooks, they have Sage, um, Peachtree, I know, I think Wave is an online free one. Um, there's tons of different free ones. Like I said, just QuickBooks is my bread and butter. So it's first to come to mind. Um, when you're first starting, you can very easily set up an Excel sheet if you're very small, but I don't advise staying there very long. QuickBooks has a self-employed program. Um, which is fairly cheap and usually a nice entry level as well. Um, but just some sort of way that you can track income and expenses um, and what you're doing. 
is always my suggestion. So chart of accounts, this is going to be the foundation of your accounting system. This is a list of all of your income, all those five items we just talked about. So this should really be the first thing that you start thinking about and setting up in your um, books when you're setting up an accounting system. So it's a list of all the names, like I said, um, from the five basic accounts. So any loans you have, any banks, any credit cards, any expenses you can think off the top of your head. You pay workers comp. You're going to start listing them all out in this, what they have, a chart of accounts. Most accounting systems, when you go in and you start setting up, they will ask you what your industry type is, and they will start suggesting, suggesting accounts uh, based on that. Um, it's quite helpful usually. Um, it will give you a good base start so you don't have to think of everything. Um, this is something that you're always going to be editing. So don't worry if you go in, you set it up and go, I didn't get that one in. But you can always go in and edit on the fly and I highly suggest you do. Um, this is all customized to your business needs. Like I said, they will, um, a lot of accounting softwares will ask you what industry and they'll start to set up base accounts things everyone uses in all business needs. Um, but you may find other things that you have specific to your industry or just something that you really want to track on your own. You're launching a new program or you're developing new software or um, just anything that you wrote a new book and you want to house everything that pertains to that into one account. So you can just say, hey, this is my book expenses or um, so you can always play with this and really hone it into what you need and want to see. All right. So here's kind of an example of the, just the breakdown of the chart of accounts. So you see the five different categories of what would, these are ideas of what would fall into it. So your assets, like I kind of mentioned, your equipment, your buildings, um, big items that you have, your petty cash, your bank accounts and then receivables. Um, same with your liabilities, your credit cards are a liability. It's a loan basically from a bank. Um, uh, your payables, any payroll taxes. Most, uh, most people use a payroll system and the way that looks is usually you pay your payroll and they impound all those taxes immediately. Well, that payroll company holds on to all that tax money for you, depending on what your filing status is, typically a quarter, and then they will send it all off to our good old government for their taxes. Um, so a lot of people will set that up in their a liability section and create that move when it happens, when it's paid. Um, equity, like I said, these are this is your capital. What did you personally as an owner put into your business? What did you personally as an owner take out of your business? Um, and then any socks you have. Uh, income, we're all very familiar with, and expenses. Quick question. Yes. On assets, the last one is stock. Yeah. Well, are you talking stock in your own company, stock in the stock market, or what you have in stock? Typically, your stock that you have in your company is going to go in your equity, it's your like common. I usually see stock and equity as common stock, stuff you own, um, like people that do like money market accounts, the Ameritrade and stuff. I have a couple clients like that and they sell them off quickly every month and that sort of thing. It so, becomes more of a revolving asset, like a money market, I would, is more my understanding of what they mean by stocks up there. Um, so stocks as in the stock market? I, yeah. Usually, like I said, typically your stocks are going to be equity. They're what you do. Your investments, right? That's right, that's exactly. Yeah. Yeah. No, yeah. Right. Well, your company has to be going right along before you start buying stocks. Yeah, this is a. <laughs> <laughs> this is not, yeah. <laughs> most, most companies don't have, yeah, most companies don't have stocks. And if they do, they're usually personally invested. So they're not going on your books. Um, yeah, I usually don't really Very have, good. yeah, unless you're breaking your company so out. I agree, uh, I should probably take it off. <laughs> no, 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 this is not your correct. Right. But you can have an unissued, you know, outstanding shares and then there's one that's issued. 
Right. So, so the company can have have stock that's un, unissued. Yes. Or, 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 you know what I mean? So you have outstanding minus issue. That makes sense. So the way I understand it, no, that could actually be your equity. That's actually what you have equity. If you're a publicly traded company. Right. Or it could be if you're an individual, you would be uh, assets or equity that you want. Well, not necessarily because the stock will lose. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it really depends on what what your industry is too. Um, I think Craig and I fully had a discussion over that goodwill one, and um, you deal with that a lot in your industry, in the legal field and all that, and I was not really sure about that because that's not by the way goodwill industry. is the expectancy of future patronage See? so if two people like situated if you have goodwill that means more clients come to you does that make sense so over the years theoretically you should be doing better than someone just starting out that does not have any let's say name recognition or brand right yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right um, yeah, so some of these accounts are up there for very uh, niche companies or just very, you know, grown up companies. All right, so our profit and loss statement. So this is going to be your bread and butter statement. You probably are already familiar with it. Um, they ask for it for everything. You buy a house, they want a profit and loss. Um, you apply for a loan, they want a profit and loss. Um, it's also referred to as an income statement, a statement of operations. It has few identifications. So um, this is what summarizes all your income and your expenses during a specific period of time. So this is generated off, you decide when it runs, begin date and end date. Um, it will show how your company is performing. Is it profitable? Is it losing? Um, only during that period of time. So it allows for your company to analyze what you guys are doing. Where's your money being spent? Did you do better sales-wise this month? Um, and find gaps also. You know, why is this off? Why is that off? That sort of thing. Um, it's always customized to your company's needs. And this is based off that chart of accounts. So again, like I said, if you're launching a new program, you want to um, track a very specific area of your company, you create that line in your chart of accounts and you get all your transactions uh, aligned with that account and it comes into your profit and loss statement. Um, and you can, yes, of course, you can run a profit and loss at any time. Um, you can do a weekly profit and loss, a monthly, a quarterly. Um, well, you could have a seasonal business. So you could have, yeah, uh huh. You see, that good, you look great. Yeah, I have a, yeah, I have a rally company, they do Baja Racing, and he's only in October. They do the rally in October, and the rest of the year looks terrible. Um, and then October is like, yay, but that's, that's him. That's just his, yeah. So you could very much have a seasonal company and a lot of your months are going to look terrible, but that, you know, that's how it is. Um, this is just a sample of a profit and loss. Um, this is Larry's landscaping. This is not a client, um, but they kind of have different items. So you can see how Larry set up his uh, books. He has different services. So he has landscaping services, markup income, retail sales, and service. I don't know what the difference between service and landscaping service would be, other than he's you know, maybe installing lights or something. Um, but this is how they track what is our most profitable area of service, right? So it's not just all income. They have different areas of what they do. Um, their cost of goods, this is um, a neat little account. It's basically an expense, but you can house it right there under your income. And cost of goods is any raw materials or finished goods that you need in order to sell what you make. Um, so cosmetics, all the, the fill and the uh, items, the boxes, I mean, the package that they put it in, they need that. Without that, they can't sell their product, right? There's no product. So that would be a cost of goods. 
you could expense it all out if you want, but usually cost of goods is your gives you this nice line yeah, right a, there. There's a laser on that too. Oh, there's a laser too. It doesn't work. It doesn't show on the screen. <laughs> Sorry. All right, just kidding. There is a laser. I will not use that. Um, okay. Yeah, I know, right? Wake up. All right. So next to our expenses, um, this is funny. This was pulled out of a QuickBooks uh, uh, Mac, an Apple QuickBooks, because it's not alphabetized in the expenses. It drives me nuts. <laughs> um, yeah, only Apple QuickBooks does not alphabetize your expenses. Can't figure it out. It does not do it. Good luck. Drives me nuts. <laughs> Anyways, um, that's a really side note. But yeah, so it will never, uh, if you have that, it won't. It's English. Uh, anyways, here are all their expenses. You can see um, all their, uh, that's, you know, they're all lined out. He could get more in depth if he wanted to with, um, you know, his expense columns, but it's up to you again. Um, miscellaneous, I will tell you, they don't have it up here. They have a miscellaneous income. Um, usually people have a, a miscellaneous, like a catch all in their expenses. Please don't do that. Nothing's miscellaneous. Everything has a place. And if it doesn't, you need to think and create one. Um, so when you're sorting all your transactions, I call it sorting, they're like little buckets. And you're putting them in all these little buckets of what they are, basically. Um, all right. So um, yeah, don't do miscellaneous. It's really like red flag <laughs> to people. It just seems odd. If there's if it's things you don't know about and you need to get answered later on, make an ask my accountant uh, account. And that's my suggestion. Is always create an ask my accountant account and put anything you're unsure of in there. Take it to your CPA, your tax advisor, your bookkeeper, your mom, your best friend. No, okay. um, I don't know, but ask, put it in there as a holding account. And so you can ask someone that has that has a little more knowledge or has, you know, could direct you more and say, hey, no, just put that over here or you did it right sort of thing, okay? Next is balance sheet. Um, so this report is kind of one that stumps everyone. It goes hand in hand with your, um, with your profit and loss statement. But this is what's gonna report all your uh, assets and liabilities and your equity. So everything that you owe and own, and then the bottom line. Um, this report is a cumulative report, meaning from the time you start that the file, that accounting file, to the day you file that report, it's pulling everything. This one is not a date to date, like you do not run it for January. It pulls everything. So with that, um, I will actually show, well, first I'm gonna go over. So reports to assets and liabilities, shareholder equity. Um, I think I did all of it. Assets must balance with the liabilities and equity. If you have a software, it will do this automatically. It will not let you be out of balance, which is nice. Um, back in the old days, you actually had to hand ledgers and everything. You actually had to balance. So, um, and then this is what's going to show what your company is actually worth. It's total value. Here is an actual sample of what that looks like. Um, so when I say paying capital, this owner's equity paid in capital. Um, that's usually what stumps a lot of people. Um, there's usually an account that's a, you know, what people, your, that's your, what you put in, your owner's investments and your owner draws. So what you put in and what you take out. And a lot of people are like, I didn't put that, I didn't take out that much money this year. Well, you didn't, but it always pulls from the first time you ever set up that account until now. So, um, this is also where you see credit cards on here, usually in this liability section. If people have credit cards, you'll see those lined out. Any loans. Um, and that's kind of it. Your assets up there. So they own land, they own buildings, and they own fixtures. Um, and yeah, again, these are all pulled off of from your chart of accounts. 
anything that you had set up. So they had to set up a cash account, they had set up inventory, accounts receivable and accounts payable are usually pre-set up accounts for you. Um, and yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Yeah, oh my God. Yeah. Uncategorized expenses thing. Oh, that they had. Um, you had, uh, I believe you had uncategorized right there. Expense. What is that? Uh, that's a QuickBooks auto create. So QuickBooks will auto create uncategorized expenses and uncategorized income for you. Can you give me an example of what would be in that column? Nothing. Oh. It should be nothing. Yeah. You should like categorize you. everything. It's like the miscellaneous one earlier. What give us an example it's what a, someone would put in there? Everything. You'd be surprised. <laughs> People put everything in the miscellaneous because they just don't know where it goes. Like, and I see a lot of like it's a lot of times it's like if you get a refund, if you overpay on your workers' comp and you're like, yeah, they send us a $25 check. And then you know, whoever's putting it in their accounting system is like, I don't know what this is, and then it just goes to whatever. Um, most people are on QuickBooks online nowadays, or even if you have desktop, they can do what they call the bank link. And so QuickBooks is intuit. They try to be very intuitive and sometimes they're very over helpful and under helpful all at the same time. And that's where a lot of this uncategorized stuff comes from is QuickBooks just like, I don't know, it's an expense, put it over there. And they just like rightfully create a category and people get really click happy in that bank feed area and they're just like, yeah. Because what happens is when it gives you a suggestion, it lights up green. And on um, any time you have your bank links in QuickBooks, and so it comes a problem. It's people get really excited. It's green, so it's like, yeah, it's good to go. But anything on categorized should be not good to go. Another quick question on uh, the bookkeeping: sole proprietor, LLC, and Inc. Uh, your three basics. Um, how is the bookkeeping different amongst the three? Um, it's or is it pretty, not? It's pretty much the same. Um, your LLCs and your corporations, usually your owner is going to be on a payroll. Um, and for the most part, they're kind of the same. Usually, you see less draws on like a new corporation on a corporation or um, LLCs. Typically, might have two different shareholders on their balance sheet. Have like shareholder one and shareholder two because now there's two partners and they're both putting money and drawing out um that's kind of yeah i'm like for the most part that's and, kind of what and i and on a incorporation and in you have to report to the state is it quarterly or twice a year it's depends like, on how much you make depends on how much you make it usually depends on your income on what your well the eight the eight hundred dollar is the, the yearly fee but then anything Past that, it's typically if you're filing on a different basis. Oh, I didn't know. Yeah, but yeah, your your state fee is always just the one year every year. They want their eight hundred. Yeah. Yeah. Just like yeah, sales tax. If you start if you sell products and you have to register for sales tax. Um, same thing if you sell. I don't know what the thresholds are, but when you sign up, they you know obviously they last year. You know what are your presumptive sales or past sales, and then they put you where you're where you're supposed to be. So I've had clients that um, started at uh, uh, twice a year filing because they didn't make enough sales, and now they're up to quarterly. No, I got one more. Yeah, he's up, in the back, and then he's up. Oh, yeah, right. sure. You get the mic, and then. I just uh, what is an S corp S corporation it's sub chapter s is that what it is it's some type of tax right a single owner oh single owner like if you were to just incorporate by yourself it's just adding a layer of protection to your business so they can sue your business right. as your business and then they can sue you personally but they can't sue you for your business stuff well doesn't the sub chapter s help you with your taxes depends no. on how much money you make <laughs> It, it can. It can behoove you to S Corp, but that's more like tax finance or finance. I, I was looking for the uh, the big R word is on the slides. Oh, uh, reconciling? No, no, no. Uh, retirement. You know, where are they, where are they hide that retirement? Uh, 
you like what you have or what you're paying, like your 401k stuff or? For business owners. Yeah. So those are going to be um, typically in your what, payroll expenses. They're typically going with your payroll expenses. So you'll have um, like you as a company, if you're uh, contributing <coughs> for your employees, you'll have that. And then you can have your own um, like payout. But typically it's a payroll expense 401k. And then um, in you on your books, all you capture is what the employer is paying out. And then what the employee matches is all their, um, basically their payroll. Yes. So in my business, I have a bookkeeper once once a month, give him the books. And then he does my quarterlies. Yeah. You know, every month he does my books, he comes in and all that. And then the quarterlies are due. Then I have a CPA that does, you know, Perfect. April yeah. 15th, yeah. right? So there'll be questions that I'll ask my bookkeeper. He'll say, ask the CPA about that one. So there is a difference between a month to month bookkeeper that does, does your you know, books every month, or does your quarterly tax, or you know, this oh, yeah. quarter. But there are questions for the CPA. Oh, definitely. You like know? I just told him, that's more of a so tax. So there's a little divide there between the CPA and the month to month bookkeeper. You know, Very much so. Yeah, no, you're totally right. You're very accurate. Um, the CPA, the financial advisor, the tax advisors, they have a lot more, uh, you know, it's like, it's tax a little knowledge. Expertise. I mean, it really is. They're, they're, you know, the book you would say for what they do. And then the CPA, what he does about the, what he asks about the corporation, he asks for our <laughs> CPA about that. Yeah, oh, yeah. So, you know, the bookkeeper knows a little bit about it, but that's not really his kid. No. We know enough to get you by, and then we're like, hey, you need to go ask the big guy. I mean, my month to month bookkeeper, man, I don't know how he does it, but man, he, he, he knows his papers. I mean, he can separate papers and everything and look at things like that. But, but, and that's what he's really good at. But then, like yeah, the CPA is it's a, it's a little bit different. Deal. Oh, it definitely is. They, have, they take a lot more classes. And then the CPA will say, changing daily. That that's true. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. <laughs> That is true. Anything else? Good morning. How are you? Okay, I I'm kind of uh, uh, trying to ask the question as we got to accountability in accounting. You know, and um, uh, how how should we uh, in terms of auditing? you know, your work and things like that. You know, you might have a bookkeeper or CPA or, or tax preparer or things like that, you know, and um, uh, 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 what is it called, uh, the IRS, you know, in which you send money, you know, uh -huh. things like that. You know, uh, what do you think might uh, help us to stay away from, uh, uh, what is it called? Audits. Like Audit. auditing. Getting caught up. Yeah, by you know, that we can make sure that the book is not cooked. <laughs> Definitely. Um <laughs> so definitely if you if you have a bookkeeper, I suggest um meeting with them, um, either requesting reports and looking deeper into where things are. Um, we try our best. I have, I've been doing this for about 15 years now. So just based on knowledge and good old Google, I can usually answer a lot of my own questions, but I tell people often, I only know that much of your business. So, and I'm only doing this from the outside looking in. So you obviously know a lot more. So, um, meeting with, with your bookkeeper and going over, um, either on a quarterly or a monthly, depending on your workload basis, um, is the best way to keep on track and in check. The second thing is not creating those weird accounts, um, no miscellaneous. Don't be frivolous in, um, you know, like your meals should not be extravagant. Nobody is taking anyone out to meals and business, business meals that often. Um, the, um, making sure your advertising is, you know, legit and backed up. I had a client that uh, they, <laughs> They bought it, they got a dog, they bought a dog, and they put the huge vet bill in advertising. 
And I was like, well, what is this? And they're like, what's well, our guard dog? And we had a harness. And I was like, okay, well, that's not. <laughs> Cyrus is not going to accept your puppy, your little chihuahua, as your office guard dog. Like, it's just like, don't, like, don't put yourself in that situation sort of thing. There are great ways to be creative and write extravagant things off for your advertising, but don't be dumb. Um, that's kind of like, just don't do the things that create the red flags. And then um, thirdly, would probably be like, get a, get a good CPA, someone that is not dirty or, you know, someone that has a good rep or that you even got a referral for. Um, there are CPAs that either it's negligence or they're just unsure um, they're, that, you know, certain things get picked up, but there are some that really know their stuff and they know what, you know, they're like, hey, that's high, that, you know, that's a red flag, or, you know, you could bump up this area, <laughs> kind of thing. Um, so they know what the red flag numbers are, they know what the categories are, and they can kind of guide you and help you that way. Um, so yeah, I think the CPA is always like, you know, find a good one, um, and someone that asks questions. Your CPA should ask a good question. You should not turn in your stuff and they just go, all right, here you go. You're going to send the state this much and you're going to send the federal this much and here's your packet. No, there should be some questions there. Um, you know, are there changes? Did you sell this? Did you sell that? They should be going your balance sheet um, and kind of nitpicking, so to speak, um, or certain items if your profit and loss looks really different. Um, so a good CPA should really be asking you questions while they're filing your taxes at least one question so uh, another question i want to uh, i want to ask is uh, the last time when i was uh, doing my taxes most of them when i do my taxes i i will instead of taking all the books and receipts i i kind of do uh, uh, some of the expenses those are some yes. categorized mm -hmm. you know to make it easier for the um, for the tax man, uh, we just pick up, you know, put everything in Excel. Yeah, you should do that. Yeah, you know, so that you can just, you know, categorize. So you can kind of uh, give you the uh, the category that says, okay, this is the category. Yes. Right? Mm -hmm. So then you will use you will use your initiative yes. to know, okay, you know, if you buy this, this is where it goes. 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 Yep. Yeah, you know I mean, so do you think? It's better to do that or to let your uh, tax man, you know, to, in order, in order he to gonna do that for you. He's going to contact someone like me or is he going to be like, you come back and you have a report like that or an Excel with all the categories. Most of your CPAs and tax people, if you come with a box, they're going to be like, no, mm -hmm. find someone. I have a referral. They will refer you to a, a me or they'll send you on your way until you come back. <laughs> yeah, they won't do it. It's not worth their time. Most of them have, like I said, either bookkeepers under them or referrals, um, or <laughs> they just expect you to kind of pre-categorize your own stuff. So, so before you do your taxes, it's oh, advising yeah. to go through this process. Right? Definitely go through all your bank statements. And like I said, even if you don't have an, uh, an accounting software, like you said, Excel sheet, and you just create columns and you just start totaling. This was my advertising. This was my travel. This was my utilities. And, and it's just anything that was housed uh, for your business. You start categorizing that all out and that's what you go take the tax down. <laughs> they will thank you. Thank you to Amanda. <laughs> So um, we're looking forward to next week. Um, Mel Andrew's going to come talk to us about LLCs. You heard him before. He was really fantastic. So uh, he'll be back. And um, let me close this in prayer. Thanks so much, Amanda. That was awesome. Thank Lord, thank you for joining us. Thank you for our family here. Thank you that we walk with you. I pray that you would bless everyone's business, their endeavors. They're building their business this week in particular. And um, we give it all to you, Lord, and pray <clears throat> in powerful name. Amen. 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 Amen.